Yes. Uh, uh, I wonder what you thought of uh, Alexander Constantine's work. Alex Constantine, uh, he's an interesting guy. Uh, I don't know what he's doing nowadays. He, he was hugely influential on me at one time. Uh, his first two books, particularly, um, Psychic Dictatorship or something, and I don't remember what the other one was. Covert War on Rock? No, before that. Um, no, before the, before the Covert War on Rock one, I don't remember what it was, but his, his first two books, yeah, he was, uh, he, he was, yeah, very influential on me, and I definitely felt a kinship with him, because uh, I, I consider myself to be very much of a left winger, and the vast majority of the conspiracy world is unapologetically right wing, so there's not a whole lot of us out here anymore these days that are, you know, really looking at it based from that perspective, so, uh, you know, I felt a a certain kinship with him. Uh, I, I don't really know what to make of him anymore. I, I don't know what he's even been doing lately. I haven't, you know, is he, is he, has he been active in much lately? Is he still? No, I just, I just remember seeing him, uh, like, when he came out with the Covert War on Rock, he did something like this, and I just, he lives, or he used to live not far from here. He used to live in yeah, West, for he years. He lived in West Hollywood. I don't know. This guy was uh, so much in the same vein. I was wondering if maybe you collaborated. I've corresponded with him at times over the years. He's emailed me. Uh, I've never met him or spoken on the phone with him or anything. We've, we've traded some emails, but nothing lately. I, you know, I haven't even I haven't heard anything about him really lately. I don't I don't know what's. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him these days. I, he, he was very closely tied to Farrell House and Adam Parfrey, which, you know, kind of raises... <laughs> that, that's weird. I don't know about that, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. He's better than most, you know. I mean, he, he's... Of what's out there, you know... Uh, but Parfrey is from L.A. too, so it could just be that. He's, uh, yeah, he's up in, like, Washington or Oregon I think now, I think. Now, like, what's that? I think he lives here now. Does he? I saw him at Trader Joe's the other day. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, yes. Have you seen the film, the documentary Evidence of Revision? And do you have have you been interested in Jonestown, the, the evidence supporting the idea that it was a CIA medical experiment? What was the film? Jonestown uh, being a CIA medical experiment. Yeah, I'm familiar with that, yeah, and uh, I believe it's it's referenced in my previous yeah. book, actually. Well, I didn't catch the name of the film. Oh, the first, uh, Evidence of Revision. It, it gets into that in the, the last... I'm not part. familiar. Is that fairly new? Or? Uh, no, I think, well, I think it came out in 2006, maybe. About there. Is it specifically about Jonestown? or is The last, it about, um, maybe, well, they're about an eighth of it, is, I'd say. Yeah, it's about no, eight I'm, hours long. Yeah. Oh, eight hours long? Yeah. You can see it on YouTube. Yeah. You I've not gotten through that yeah. one yet, no. You can see it on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. What else does it cover in eight Kennedy. hours? Just Kennedy, both Kennedys. Yeah. yeah. Brothers. And mind control. Who put, do you know who put it together? Who was, uh, I no idea. I don't know who it was. Do you know? It's a guy that, uh, like, paid people to collect, like, people that worked at, like, CBS and stuff, or, like, stuff that they had, like, and rocked away. Like footage, rare stuff, and they just compiled it. Yeah, it's I think he's trying to remain anonymous. You know. mm -hmm. Not, no, not, not, not uh, familiar with that. <laughs> not yet, anyway. I had a question. You, you mentioned uh, Steve Allen. Steve Allen. Yeah. In the book. Yeah. <coughs> I was really surprised because he's like this real shadowy person. I'm that trying to remember. You know, what, one of the things that 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 that, uh, that amazed even me was one of the, one of the, one of the tasks that I got from my publisher was to go through the book, comb through the book, and, and pick out all the names and places that I wanted listed in the index. And uh, even I was astounded by how many names pop up in his book in so many different know. contexts. And, and, and people from all walks of life, you know, you, you got yep. serial killers, you got porn stars, you got, you know, rock stars, you got yeah. all these people that you would not think be, would be co-mingling. And, uh, yeah, Steve Allen you don't was... don't have Steve Allen on here. I yeah. believe he, he was one of the original, he provided, like, the original financing for the LA Free Press, I believe, yeah. which was yeah. situated really? right, literally, at the mouth of Laurel Canyon. At, uh, Crescent Heights and Sunset, it launched in like 1967 and just out of nowhere just basically provided uh, this scene with their own little 
publication, and uh, which is one of the, one of the things that, that really helped to uh, you know to also, let people know who all these new bands and clubs were and whatnot. He 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 founded the uh, center of the institute for something. Um, God, it's right on it's right on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, Inquiry. Yes, in, in center for inquiry or something. And they had a black, they had a satanic black mass there that was scheduled and promoted maybe a couple of years ago. But he's also shown up as a shadowy sort of hmm. mention in other books. Is he still alive? No, I don't think so. Don't think so. But but he sure. his his persona his his persona in the old days was that he was a good guy and was doing all this, you know philosophic stuff and very progressive and so forth, but he comes out of this kind of shadowy thing, so I just wonder if you had much on I did not really dig much into him, you know, he, he was really just sort of a peripheral figure and, you know, what, what didn't play a, a hugely influential role, so I didn't, uh, didn't dig, dig yeah, too like deep into, into yeah. Steve Allen. Um, was he also... I don't know, the Steve he, Allen show. Remember? Was, was he was also it? one of Vito's students? Because Vito Pelikas, there was a lot of big no, names. No, I think that, he was uh, probably... like People like Mickey Mooney, I think. He, he had all these yeah, celebrity yeah. Uh, students yeah. come into his, his art studio. Yes, I think right. so he did. So he might have been... He might have come up in... I don't know. Twice he's, he's come up in their book. Yeah, it's possible. He might, yeah. So I thought you might have a, more on him. Yeah. I know there's at least one Brady Bunch reference in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Long-time <laughs> followers know I have a disturbing... Obsession with uh, Brady Bunch references. <laughs> I was actually going to start off today by, by telling you guys all that I that I was forming a uh, mental image of all of you sitting out there in your underwear, which is yeah. that I picked up from Marsha Brady back in. <laughs> what if I didn't have my underwear on? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Uh, this. Oh, sure. You. Yeah. Um, love your book, by the way. I ordered, pre-ordered a copy. Thank you. And uh, so oversaw it basically as a psyop against the anti-war movement as being the main reason all this existed. Um, my main interest is in the, with the anti-war movement uh, because it eventually led to the shootings at Kent State. And uh, do you think that this was all pre-done? Do you think that was the main reason for the hippie movement? I think that was one of the primary reasons, yeah, definitely, to, you know, be, before that, as, as explained in the book, um, you know, the, the anti-war movement, which is long forgotten now, actually began on college campuses, and, uh, you know, it was mainly spearheaded by college professors and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and by their mm -hmm. students, uh, you know, their, their student followers or whatever, and, um, you know, these, these were very clean-cut, conservative, intelligent, mm -hmm. educated, you know, people, and I think the, you know one of one of the main goals absolutely was to was to put a much different face on on the anti-war movement. And so what we got, like literally out of nowhere, was, was were these people that just you know just yeah. looked like they were, came out of I don't know where you know, and just the hairstyles and the clothing styles and the language you know that the, the, they, they you know had their own language and the free love and, and the open drug use and and the the rock music and, and all of this stuff was just uh, you know to me when I was a kid it was great right I wanted to be a hippie but you know the reality is that the, the mainstream America you know that, that that was about the most unattractive face they could have possibly put on the anti-war movement was was replacing these college professors with these long-haired granny-glassed hippies with the free signs advertise. and uh, you know it, it was yeah. just a very distasteful image to most people and so yeah I, I believe it was very mm -hmm. I think the all yeah. uh, anyway, I lost my train of thought there but yeah um, yeah again yeah I think I think it was absolutely uh, uh, me intended too. to do exactly you know what it did and you had a question yeah uh, hey, can you uh, thanks for doing this by the way good to see you in Brooklyn you're quite yeah. welcome. Do I know you? No. <laughs> the, um, what what happened with the hippies and, and what happened? Wait, wait. wait. Question right. was back here. Right? Right. Sorry. Right. Yes. Can you uh, give us some insight? What kind of feedback do you get?